So I was watching England Moldova and was genuinely shocked at how no one on television disagreed with the comments of Greg Dyke, the new chairman of the FA. For some reason, he's being portrayed as the nation's latest hero, a man who isn't afraid to voice the problem that we've swept under the carpet for years. I understand why he was appointed. This is a man who turned around the BBC, and the FA will hope that he can use his skill of turning bad institutions good to help them. But, for me, he's got it all wrong. Dyke puts forward a few arguments as to why England are underperforming. The first is that English kids are not technically skilled enough. The next is that we don't have enough coaches. The third is the classic, if unbelievably flawed, argument that there are too many foreigners in the league. And the last is that the gap between the Premier League and the Championship is too wide. And because the young English talent in the Championship isn't good enough, clubs buy overseas. And how does he suggest we solve these problems? Well, we should introduce quotas, illegal under European law for EU-based players, to keep those pesky foreigners out of our country. We should make work permits more difficult to get hold of, in the hope that those strange people from abroad will be replaced by a 27-year-old from the conference who, hopefully, will become the next Paul Scholes. Of course, I'm being sarcastic, but some of these arguments are silly. Let's go through them properly. The technique of English kids. It may not be a popular opinion, but actually I'd argue that their technique is quite good. If you look at the younger players coming through, a lot of them have a very good first touch. Wilshire is the example that immediately springs to mind, but players like Jones and Henderson also do. In 10 years time, that should mean that even more of the English team have good control. Besides, we complain about poor touch in England, but in Brazil they complain about the lack of defensive solidity, which Italy have, and in Italy they complain about the poor physical presence, which we have in England. An idiosyncrasy of the English game isn't necessarily a negative feature. We don't have enough coaches, or more accurately, we don't have enough highly qualified coaches. Yep, I, I actually agree with Greg Dyke, that is a problem. But having more coaches would predominantly help kids in their key learning years of football, let's say before 14. Very few of the English national team in 2022, the year that Dyke wants us to win the World Cup, despite English teams traditionally performing worse in hot climates, would have therefore experienced those changes. Coaches are very important. In fact, in my opinion, they should be the FA's target, not winning the World Cup. If you want better English students, you need better teachers. Football figures enjoy scapegoating foreigners for the supposed lack of national team success. Greg Dyke, on top of Platini, Blatter and more, is the most recent to fall into this trap, noting that the league's success effectively comes at the expense of the national side. Absolute bollocks. Unless you're German, you probably consider the Premier League to be the best league in the world. Almost 40% of Premier League playing time can be attributed to English players. Think how much that is. Our national team pool has the privilege of playing in the best, if not one of the best, leagues in the world. The top English players get to play against some of the best from around the world on a weekly basis. If we had less foreigners in the league, the Englishmen would simply become more complacent, more tired and face worse opposition. Now that would be to the detriment of the national team. If anything, more foreign players would provide more competition and make English players better prepared. Besides, how exactly does Dyke plan to get more English players playing for our top teams? The only answer could be quotas. Legally, they're sketchy, but even if they weren't, the FA simply has neither the power nor the authority to bully such a system into the Premier League. I'm not really sure what the problem of a gap between the Premier League and the Championship is. I understand the argument. If teams are looking to sign cheap players, they could either buy them from the Championship or from higher quality leagues abroad, so they choose not to develop English talent. But I'm still not sure what the problem is. If you make the Premier League worse, to be closer to the Championship, that can't be good for the national side. Making the Championship, which, let's keep in mind, is probably the best second division on the planet, better would be great, but that also requires that more English players play to a high level, which again leads us back to better coaching. Most importantly, to undermine the whole topic before I finish, do people even care? Personally, I prefer the success of my national side to the success of my beloved club team, but most people I speak to feel the opposite. Is national team success really that important? Or, perhaps better phrase, is national team success important enough that our domestic game should suffer? As I said, I do however agree with Dyke when he says that we need more qualified coaches in this country. For me, the way to do that is to lower barriers to entry. 
I would love to take coaching courses, but when the basic level courses are £150 and cost only increases as you progress, it's simply not accessible to me. So if you're watching Mr Dyke, I'm sorry for giving you such a hard time with your plans and would greatly appreciate a sponsorship for one of your organisation's coaching courses. Thanks for watching.